hearing this. Uh, my name is Murray Blackmore. I'm a professor at Marquette University. I run a research lab that works on spinal cord injury. I serve on a federal review panel for grants. I help organize meetings and of course my lab competes for grants. So I'm here to kind of give the insider scientist perspective um, on this bill. I'm also here as a family member. Uh, when, my, when I was 13, uh, my mom suffered a spinal cord injury. She was paralyzed from the shoulders down. I watched her live for 27 years with the injury. Uh, about 10 years ago, I watched her die from it. Um, over the course of a couple months, her lungs slowly gave out and she slowly drowned. Um, it's not a good way to die. And I'm sorry, but it's what's waiting for a lot of people in Wisconsin with high cervical injuries. So I say that to say this, uh, I became a scientist to solve a problem. And I'm here today because I think this bill is a really smart, really effective way to do that. And the reason I think that is that I've looked at the outcomes. All right. So the whole idea here is that this is seed money and it's been instituted in other states. So it's fair. Let's take a hard look at exactly what the outcomes have been in other states. And they kind of break into two categories. One is commercialization. All right. So researchers have been able to do pilot studies that then attract venture capital and then spin off startup startup companies. So there's two examples of that in Minnesota and there's one in Ohio. There's a variation on that. You can do a study and then attract uh, like industry support and then form a partnership and launch clinical trials that way. It amounts to the same thing. You're moving treatments into, into people and you're uh, advancing economic development. The other uh, main way that researchers can use these funds, as you've already heard, is to compete for federal grants. Look, federal grants are big, but they're very slow and they're very, very cautious. So the play is you use state funds to quickly get the proof of principal data, and then you use that to compete for the federal grants. And this is nice because you can put a hard number on how effective this is, and it's eight to one. So far, from the numbers I've seen, for every $1 that states have put into these pilot funds, $8 in federal funding have come back as a result. That's an unusual number in my field. Um, and it's made me think about, so what is it? What makes this so effective? It's a lot of things. This mechanism is fast, it's accountable, it's competitive. But if I had to pick one element, um, it's that review panel. You've already heard it. It's that mix of scientists and clinicians and critically, people living with the injury, right? And what that panel can do is they can spot the ideas that have real world impact in a way that a panel of pure scientists, which is what I'm on federally, um, just can't do or doesn't do. Um, so it really works. I wanna uh, land on just one point, which is the degree to which scientifically Wisconsin is ready for this bill. So by my count, there are 14 um, different labs at four different institutions already working in the area of nerve repair. There's many more that I think we could pull in with this incentive. Um, and very importantly, what Wisconsin have, has is a strength in um, actual tissue regeneration and really advanced genetic techniques. And that's important because the cure for spinal cord injury is gonna take a variety of different approaches working together. And I think different regions are likely to have different strengths. So, so far, Minnesota and Washington um, they've kind of gotten out front with this idea of electrical stimulation, which we've already heard about. It can benefit patients, but I think it has um, a real ceiling to how effective it can be. And the future is going to be these um, tissue regeneration and genetic approaches. So I think there's an opportunity for Wisconsin to, um, to take a leading role in that. And I'm actually I'm going to take a quick detour about tissue regeneration based on the question. Um, let me say this. and I'm, let me be very careful. I'm speaking for myself personally and my scientific opinion. I'm personally very sympathetic um, and sensitive to the issues you raise about um, embryonic tissue. Scientifically, we live in a world where stem cells can be derived from adult tissue, and I don't see a good scientific reason to, to push on, on the embryonic tissue. So scientifically, um, I don't see a reason to do it, and to the extent that I'd influence this panel, um, I would hope that that would not be the direction that we would go in Wisconsin, for what it's worth. Um, bottom line, uh, if, if these funds exist, there's going to be, I predict, there's going to be really strong applications from all around the state, 
Certainly my lab will be among those who are going to try to compete for these funds. There's no guarantee that we'll succeed. It's going to be a very competitive field. But I trust this panel to spot the applications with the very strongest impact. Um, and I'm really excited to see what kind of initiatives, both private and federal, um, that we could launch here in Wisconsin. So I'll end there, and I'm happy to take any questions. You had mentioned earlier 14 different facilities or 14 different states or what what did you what was Well those are labs. I just I went labs through yeah the country or Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. I I just went through kind of my mental Rolodex and said who in Wisconsin is doing cutting edge nerve regeneration research and where are they? And by the time I was done with the list it was 14 labs that that I think have shovel ready projects like ready to go. It's a big number. Can I just say there's a huge irony here? Unite to Fight Paralysis is based in Minnesota, so that was the first state where this launched. But at the time, I don't think anyone would have picked Minnesota as having a particular strength in spinal cord injury. And then right next door in Wisconsin, I think, especially again with this tissue regeneration angle, um, much greater strength. So it's a little ironic that we're, we're seven years after them, if you will, eight years. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for this gentleman? Nope.